Uh, my name is uh, Omar Kimisi. I'm a structural engineer. I uh, work in the Auckland uh, office. And uh, uh, Juan, whom you just uh, spoke, uh, who just spoke, uh, is a, uh, originally from uh, Peru. Uh, he did his undergraduate work over there, and then he came to UC Berkeley where he got his PhD uh, in structural engineering also. He uh, is very, very familiar with the area of Latin America. As a matter of fact, we use him, uh, we use his services and his skills to enable us to uh, fine tune our vulnerability functions that we use, especially in uh, Latin America. Furthermore, he did do a lot of work all over Latin America, and in particular in Concepcion, uh, Concepcion over here. And uh, as you can imagine, he's anxiously waiting words to see how those buildings behave. <laughs> and I'm sure, knowing you know, his skills, that they did just well. Uh, now, uh, yesterday I had the opportunity to speak with uh, one of our engineers uh, by the name of uh, Sergio Ostromo. I hope I'm pronouncing them correctly who is in our office of Vina del Mar. And Vina del Mar is uh, up north in the previous slide. I'm sorry. It's close to, very close to this area here, to this uh, to Valparaiso. And uh, I just uh, asked him, you know, what kind of information he can give us in uh, the area where he is. And uh, what he said is that the, the city has, uh, asked people in 30 residential apartment buildings that are about 20 story high to evacuate the buildings. So 30 residential buildings have been uh, declared unsafe and they have been evacuated. I uh, asked him what kind of, uh, how many buildings, what is the percentage of buildings this represents? He said about roughly 15% of the high rise buildings in uh, uh, his city. He, uh, I asked him, can you tell me what you felt during the earthquake? And he said, well, he lives uh, in the ninth floor in a different complex building. And he said there was a lot of shaking. He said four minutes. Uh, we'll have to find out whether it's really four minutes or not. But he said, well, four minutes long. And he said, every single thing that can break broke in terms of content. So all the, uh, the dishes, I think you know, he has to go. His wife is probably going to go soon to do some more shopping, get more glasses and uh, dishware. But he said the windows did not break and the building did not suffer any structural damage, which is good. Uh, furthermore, what he said is that uh, it was a, he said it was the probably last weekend of summer or something like that, maybe it's a holiday over there. And he said a lot of people were sitting in the, uh, went to the, uh, to the shore. And uh, as apparently, you know, what he said, uh, probably a lot, a lot of people aren't accounted for as of now because of the, uh, the wave. So we don't know exactly what's going on. I must uh, say one thing, um, a disclaimer. This is a preliminary information. We don't really have all the story pieced together. So uh, we will, as we're learning more, as stories you know, become uh, more known and story unfolds, we will be able to provide you more accurate information. But as of now, this is all the information we have, and we'd like to make sure that you know uh, you understand that it is preliminary only. Uh, what he said is that several ports were affected. This is Talcahuna. Talcahuna, where one of our uh, engineers from uh, Chile stayed there, was, was stationed there for about six or seven years, and is going to be helping us gather information. He said a lot of uh, ports were affected, and this area here was uh, mostly affected by the uh, by the wave, the tsunami, we came back. As a matter of fact, you know, I have tons of pictures that are sitting on my Blackberry. I didn't have ch t chance to, uh, to download them yet, otherwise we would have uh, shared them with you. Uh, he also said that about 60% of the churches were destroyed and some commercial buildings, some hospitals as well. He mentioned there is a highway, 68, although I'm not exactly sure where this highway is, but he said, has uh, been subjected to extensive uh, damage. Uh, there are no really uh, 
detail on individual facilities, but extensive damage is uh, expected. Electrical generating plants apparently have suffered minor damage, and water plants are uh, being repaired. Uh, water plants are uh, repairing the uh, water main, main uh, pipelines. What he said is that uh, the area is uh, the area that has been affected. You know, there is no phone communication, so he was they were very difficult, you know, to uh, to get details on uh, what really happened as of uh, yesterday. I'm just going to go and show you some of the pictures that I stole from uh, here and there, and uh, I uh, just because of time I forgot to put the uh, the source of these pictures, and uh, you'll forgive me if I didn't put uh, the uh, official courtesy from this and that on these pictures, but we'll edit that later on. Uh, this is in Santiago de Chile, and uh, what you can tell is uh, that uh, one building here seemed to have withstood okay, whereas this one here next by has suffered damage. Uh, I'm just going to give you some speculations, although we don't know really the full story. This could be pre uh, due to a uh, on the other side, we would have probably seen better, but maybe uh, there is a soft story failure, or uh, maybe this building has a soft story which kind of uh, brought the building down, or there could be also some <coughs> differential settlement. It could be some soil failure also. We don't know. But uh, this building seems to be intact. I don't see any cracks in the building. So it seems like this building was doing okay, whereas this one, which is just next, uh, next door, was, not, was unlucky. Uh, this is some pictures that you have probably seen from CNN, uh, which has covered the, uh, the event very, very well, as well as what they did a great job also on Haiti. I'm very proud of the, uh, the media are kind of really taking, taking, uh, taking us to a new level in reporting earthquakes, which is very, very good. Uh, now, this uh, overpass collapsed, and uh, one question is, uh, been, uh, we've been asking ourselves, you know, what, what happened to these cars? You know, why are they flipped? We don't know. We don't know when some of the cars have flipped. Some people speculated that maybe the acceleration was very, very high. Uh, since we don't, well, since this is in such a good city, I don't think you know the acceleration was that high. But maybe the, the the level of shaking was so high. It's a very flexible structure. There's a lot of uh, maybe vibration back and forth, and the, the 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 driver may have panicked. You can maybe speculate or can imagine what could happen, and uh, uh, the car over. Overturned. It's another view. This is a church, old building. So you'd expect, you know, as uh, Juan mentioned, that uh, old structures, masonry structures, you know, would not do well, as indicated in his uh, spectra discussion. As well as we know, these buildings usually don't do well at all during earthquakes. Another picture of uh, the overpass. This is an uh, airport in Santiago. See a lot of uh, contents, contents damage, as well as uh, this seems to be like a uh, cantilevered structure that came down. <coughs> 